What kind of symptoms do you see in people who are electrically sensitive to EMFs, for instance, right? Like, mm -hmm. what kind of symptoms do people get if they're sitting near a, a router too much or their overall health, their, their, you know, their allostatic load is the technical term of just the overall stress bucket is too much and they're, they're working next to a Wi-Fi router or they've decided to like sleep next to a Wi-Fi router or they're putting their cell phone next to their head while they're sleeping because they don't want to miss their text from their boyfriend or girlfriend and they've got it on full cell service. Like, what kind of, what kind of symptoms do some people who are electrically sensitive get? So, you know, just speaking from my own personal experience, uh, my personal symptom is brain fog. When I'm around too much EMF and too much technology, I feel like my brain just doesn't work as good. It's hard to come up with the words. I'm not thinking as clearly. Um, my wife's symptom is more irritability. When she's on the laptop or the computer too long, she gets a little more irritable. She can recognize, like, I got to put this down and take a walk. Don't talk to me right now. And my, my daughter, my oldest daughter, we thought she had severe ADD. We're at the point where we're going to have to get her on some, some Ritalin or some drugs or whatever. You know, it was about... Eight, 10, eight years ago, uh, we went completely Wi-Fi free in our home, EMF free, and we saw a difference overnight with her and her thinking ability. So I would say there's a lot of the neurological type issues when we're dealing with, with radio frequency exposure, uh, the brain fog, the irritability, the ADHD, the, like the Alzheimer's type symptoms, um, and then sleeping as well. It can affect the sleep patterns. Now, before you came out here, I was turning my Wi-Fi off at night and I put my cell phone on a charger, which is probably 20 feet from my bed. But you, we'll, we'll make a little video of this. Fucker is it, goddamn Apple. I didn't have the Bluetooth all the way off. I don't think it was really affecting me because I was far away, but there's like a little set, like just because I hit the little icon on my iPhone and it goes white doesn't mean the Bluetooth is off. You have to go to settings and turn your Bluetooth off. You showed me that. But still I was having some sleep issues and we can talk about, we'll get to in the podcast what I think might be causing those or might've been worsening those. But let's just, let's just go a little deeper in this because it was really interesting for me to understand with my computer how, how much radiation I was getting from my computer. People might have heard, okay, my cell phone has radiation. Maybe they heard someone talk about a study, and I believe there are studies showing that if you put your cell phone in your pants, it can reduce sperm counts and potentially testosterone. This is not pseudoscience. This is not like hippy-dippy, I don't know, stuff. You know, This is not fairy dust and unicorns and... This is not, we're gonna talk about vibes, but this is like actual physics and science, right? But um, like, it's interesting, we measured, and, and we'll put a video of this, we measured my computer, right? So when the Wi-Fi is on at my house, we measured the Wi-Fi router, 2.4 million microwatts per square meter right at the Wi-Fi router, right? Yep. And then you go back and you go back and, and, and I'm using Wi-Fi on my computer, which means my computer has to have the Wi-Fi antenna on. Mm -hmm. I had the Bluetooth antenna on my computer on. And, and what kind of stuff did we see at my computer that I'm sitting by right in front of? I don't use it on my lap, but it, I'm sitting in front of it for hours a day. Yeah, so again, it's proximity. And so we start getting further away from the router, it goes down, but now we start getting close to your laptop and your devices and it starts to go back up again. And so when you're sitting there at the laptop, you're usually exposed to about 20 to 40,000, depending on how far you are from the screen. 20 to 40,000 microwatts per square meter. Yes. And, you're, and you really think this should be like less than 10? Ideally, some of the studies that are coming out are saying that when we're less than 10, that we think that there's a good chance that we're not getting a lot of long-term um, harm from that. 10 to 40,000. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Some of you will understand, like, the difference here in terms of, and 2.5 million, 10 to 2.5 million at the router, 2.5 million when the phone is in my hand, at my air, which I don't do, but it can be at someone's ear, in your pocket. Okay, so there's like massive orders of magnitude here and what we want. And so I had a, an EMF blocking mat under my computer, but you said that's just going to reflect it right back up in my face. Right, so it acts like a mirror. So anytime we have a conductive surface, radio frequency will hit that or will reflect off just like light would reflect off a mirror. So depending on where that's positioned. So if it's sitting on your lap, it might uh, be protecting your nuts, but it's not protecting your face or your body because what's happening is it's hitting that and reflecting back up. This is it's so interesting because, you know, um, Whenever I see like guys on my team working with their computer on their lap, I'm like, man, you can't do that. You're, you're frying your nuts. And we've done content on that. We'll probably do some more content about people using cell phones or laptops or iPads. And the amount of radiation coming off of those, it's going right into your ovaries or testicles. Mm -hmm. It's pretty significant. Um, and so I thought I was doing a good thing with the EMF blocking mat, but it's just reflecting all that right up back into my face. Yes. That's crazy. Okay. And so this is where I want to talk about some solutions briefly, and then we'll get into them. So what we did was we hardwired my Wi-Fi, or we hardwired my internet, I should say, right? And 
I've realized this in the past that if you if you run an ethernet cable from your router to your computer, you will look like a Neanderthal and a troglodyte, but you will, <laughs> but you will reduce the amount of, of, of radiation in your, in your home because you can turn the Wi-Fi off on your router. And that's a little complex. We can talk about that too. But so then what we measured, and we'll, do, we'll put this all in a video in, in the YouTube and we'll put it on the podcast also, is we can turn the Wi-Fi antenna off on my computer and we can turn the Bluetooth antenna off on my computer. And, and I'm still getting a computer that works, right? I can use ethernet on the computer. I have internet on the computer. All of my stuff that comes to the internet works. I can get iMessage on my computer. What was what was the signal or like, do you remember what we were measuring when everything was off and I was hardwired to my router? Yeah, I think we were around between 100 to 200. So we went from 20,000 to 40,000 down to around 100 to 200, depending on where you are in that range. And that's just crazy that you can reduce it, you know, 100x, 1,000x in, in a lot of cases and just significantly reduce that by hardwiring it. Now, if people want to do this, you can just get, what did you recommend? Cat6 coaxial cables on Amazon? Coax, uh, Cat6 network cables, shielded. Yeah, and you know what I find when a lot of my clients actually do this and, and hardwire their computer and then turn off Bluetooth and Wi-Fi is that they're able to work for longer periods and be a lot more productive. And we're just seeing this across the board. So yeah, you might look like a Neanderthal, but you know what? You're going to get a lot more work done. You're going to be a lot more productive. And when you are done with work, you're not going to feel fully drained. When I was in medical school, I did this. I bought like three ethernet cables for my house in Tucson, Arizona. And I shut the Wi-Fi off and my roommates were like, they just went into a panic. They were like, what the fuck? We can't use Wi-Fi. And it's like, no, no Wi-Fi in the house. And we had these cables running. It was so, it looked so ugly, but there's ways to do it. I had these huge cables running to each of their rooms. And every time I went, I was like out of the house, I'd come back and they'd snuck in and turn the Wi-Fi back on on the router. So if somebody wants to do this, it was, what is it? 192.168.0.1 or 192.168.1.1 is the website. You go to that on your computer and you can get into your router and turn, put the admin and the password and you can actually physically turn off the Wi-Fi from your computer, right? Correct. Yep. Okay. And we're still trying to figure that out, but that's, that's a technical hack for you guys. If you want to hardwire your computer, you can go into the router, turn off the Wi-Fi from your computer and hardwired. So at your house in Idaho, you're completely hardwired. You have no Wi-Fi in your house. Completely, completely EMF free. No Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi, nothing. Your kids hate you? No, because they've grown up like that. <laughs> That's amazing. So they don't know any better. <laughs> I love it. How do, you, how do you guys use cell phones in a house like that? Because there's a way to do this too, right? Yeah. So with my cell phone, I have Google Voice, an app put on there, and I ported my phone into Google Voice. So that way when I'm at my desk or in my house, I can hardwire my phone just like we do the laptop. And then I can still receive texts and calls. But I try to do a lot of my, any of the stuff I'm gonna do on the web, I try to do just from my laptop. I, don't, I try not to use my phone as minimal as possible. So just when I'm out on the road, keep touch with my family if I need to, you know, check text. But a lot of times it's on airplane mode. I'm with a client, I'm traveling. Try to keep it on airplane mode as much as possible and just try not to be connected. And I think there's a lot of other benefits from that as well. Mentally, you know, phone is a big addiction and it's really a big habit thing for people just to pull out, get on their phone and start scrolling. I think if you don't look at your phone as a source of entertainment and look at more of like a communication lifeline and then you treat it as such and then it kind of your attitude towards it will change.